Hey, hey, what's good, everybody? Y'all, happy Wednesday, happy Wednesday, happy Wednesday. I am on my TikTok account, trying to go live on TikTok. So I will be live on TikTok and Instagram tonight. So y'all give me one second, please. But happy Wednesday. Hope everybody's doing absolutely fantastic. I'm super excited about tonight. I am excited about touching you guys, touching your souls, giving you some light, love, and, and just full of God, giving you ways to break free of the chains that are holding you back in life. I am just excited. I am excited to see you. I am excited to talk to you. I am excited to just pour into you. Just excited. I am super excited and wouldn't have it any other way. But if you can give me one second, so I'm going to pin my um, information here, but just give me one second, please, everybody. Um, thank y'all for the love. I appreciate you guys. I love y'all so much. I get excited to see y'all on Wednesdays. If you new, welcome. If you're joining again and you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. I just appreciate you more than you know. And I am just grateful for each and every one of you. Each and every one of you. Make sure you tag a friend, share it out, share the video out with someone who needs it. SamanthaJWest10 at gmail.com. All right, so I actually just... I am pinning my information here for anybody that wants to sow into my ministry. Everything you all give is more than appreciated. So um, I am grateful for each and every penny, every, every dime, everything that you give. It's appreciated. So if you want to sow into the ministry, I, I, I pinned the comment there. So you can definitely do that. Um, uh, via Cash App or Zelle. And uh, I am going live on TikTok as well as Instagram. And so I'm downloading my TikTok and getting all that say straight. I actually had the plan to have all this taken care of before I got on with y'all. But, you know, we working through it right now, right? Okay, so tonight is going to be good, 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 good. So I am excited. Oh, and if you're not following me on YouTube, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, shame on you. I'm going to stop actually saving my lives on Instagram. Um, I will be saving them for maybe a day or so, and then I'm going to transfer all of my videos over to YouTube. So if you're not following me on YouTube, may, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure that you subscribe. Um, it's Samantha J. West on YouTube. So, um, make sure you subscribe, click OK. I don't want to close it. Mm. Yeah, so make sure you subscribe and just join me on YouTube. Again, I am trying to... Oh, my God trying to download this information for TikTok. I've already done it, so I'm not really understanding what's going on. I actually went live on there last night for the first time. So, because you had to meet like a minimum requirement, you had to go live for like 25 minutes first before you could actually do a whole live. So I did a live there. Um, but if you're not following me on TikTok, make sure you actually follow me on TikTok. My TikTok is, I am Samantha J. West on TikTok as well, I believe if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, happy Wednesday, y'all. Happy Wednesday. I am super excited about tonight. Like super, super, super excited to pour into you guys. So I hope you got your notebooks. I hope you got your, your, your notepad on your phone, whatever. Oh my God, what is going on? I just like, I don't get it. 
but I hope you have your notebooks, your pen and pad ready because I like to pour into you. I'm always giving you the word and how we can incorporate the word into our lives, right? Because I truly believe that I may be the only word for some people. And I'm okay with that. What is going on? But I'm okay with that. I want to actually, you know, be used however God wants to use me. I have no problem with that. So, um, I'm excited to pour into you guys. Yeah, give me a second. Okay, perfect. Here it is. It came up. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Perfect, 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 perfect. Give me a second, y'all. I don't have to do all of that. Yeah, do all, I don't want to do all that. Okay. Yeah, give me a second. I'm sorry. I'm trying to go, trying to make sure I'm, I'm live on TikTok and, um, where am I? Instagram, right? So, one second, y'all. Hold on. I apologize. I wasn't ready. And now I'm trying to do, we have combined... Tonight, we're going to be talking about doubt. Um, like how we tend to doubt God. But yeah, give me one second. I'm sorry. Like, I am so sorry. I hate, I hate being late and I hate like not being ready. It's annoying to me. Okay, I got that. So now what? Okay, topic. Hold on, guys. Would it be considered? Let's just do this. All right, let's see. Okay, let's do this. I'm still figuring it out. I'm actually going live on my... Uh, going live on my computer, on my laptop. So this is like new to me. Um, what's the name of this? Dealing with, oh, okay. You of little faith. Dealing with doubt. All right, let's do it. All right, bet. We got it. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Y'all pray for me, okay? I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Okay. I'll be ready next week, I promise. I promise I will. I don't know. Oh, this is so annoying. Okay, anyway, what's good? <laughs> Happy Wednesday. I hope everybody's doing amazing. I apologize for being here, being there. I'm trying to, like I said, I'm trying to pull up TikTok on my computer. I have it up, but I don't really know, like, it, when I press go live, it's not going live. So, in the meantime, like, love, share the video, tag a friend who needs the information. All right, perfect. Let me see now. Oh my God. What the hell? They say I'm live, but I don't see the screen. Anybody ever did live on TikTok? I'm irritated with this, like seriously. 
so irritated with this because I don't even know what I'm doing right now. All right, I'll figure it out next week. I, like, because this is going to get on my nerves. <sighs> okay, sorry, y'all. I'm focused now. <laughs> I am sorry. That's that's just annoying me. But anyway, tonight we're going to be talking about doubt. We're going to be talking about doubt and we're going to get into it. Like I said, I like to bring the word to real life because sometimes I may be somebody's only Bible, somebody's only hope, and somebody's only light. So I like to incorporate God into the, the world. Because we tend to try to incorporate the world with God, but that's not how it works, right? Um, okay, hold on. We got to, you know, we have to block the spam. All right, so let's get into it, y'all. Well, let's get into it. So tonight, like I said, we're going to be talking about doubt. I named the message, You of Little Faith tackling doubt we're dealing with doubt tonight you of little faith have you ever been in a place where you've doubted god and on this page we keep it all the way real have you ever been in a space where you have doubted god you've doubted him in um the, the prayers that you send up, you doubt that he's going to answer. You doubt that he can do it. You doubt that, um, you know, um, he's not, he doesn't have the ability. You doubt, you know, maybe his power. You doubt his authority. Like, have you ever doubted God? And I know, I know 1000%, whether you want to admit it or not, I know I ain't the only one. I know I'm not the only one. I have, I have, and we talking about somebody who go hard for God. We talking about somebody who faithfully read the Bible, faithfully in his face, faithfully seeking his, um, his, his, seeking, seeking his face, seeking him faithfully, right? And yes, even I have doubted God sometimes. I, I, I honestly think we all do. I honestly think we all doubt God. Like, more times than we should. Y'all, hold on. I'm sorry. This sucks, man. I don't even know. Like, it's like people joining, but I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay. I don't know. If, okay. Anyway. But I know we're all guilty of doubting God. Like, and let's just keep it all the way real. Right? Um, I have doubted God several times, several times in my life. And I, I don't know if it's that I doubt God's ability or I doubt my capabilities more than anything, right? I think it's more that I doubt God's, that I doubt myself more than I doubt him. And because I doubt my own abilities more than I then that makes me start doubting God's capabilities, right? And usually when God calls us to do something bigger, something way grander than what we're doing now, you know, uh, anything bigger than our current reality, then nine times out of 10, we're going to start doubting ourselves. We're going to start going into the space of comfort of what we know. And our comfort zone only allows us to see so much, right? It's what we're comfortable in. It's what we're used to. It's what, you know, has kept us in a space for years. And we're only able to see so much inside of the picture. We're only able to see so much. You can't see the frame when you're inside of the picture. So we start going into our comfort zone. Every time God calls you higher or even calls you to do what he's calling you to do, you go back into what's comfortable and you start to doubt yourself and your abilities because you don't feel like you can do it because you haven't seen an example of it being done in your life. Nine times out of 10, right? Nine times out of 10, you haven't seen it being done as an example in your life. Therefore, you don't have anything to really kind of grasp onto or hold onto or give you a belief 
that takes you beyond that comfort zone, takes you beyond that, stretches you beyond, right? Um, Because typically when, like I said, and it's typical because usually when God is, is, is telling you to do something that you've never done before. That's when we tend to doubt ourselves the most. I remember when God first, like, one of the times that I heard his voice clearly. And he started showing me visions of where I was headed, right? And I'll never forget this. This is this is a true story, right? I remember he first showed me, like, it was time for me to, like, take a leap. And at this time, God had been telling me to leave my job. And, excuse me, I'm sorry, but God had been telling me to leave my job and I was in a spirit, I was just seeking his face clearly, like, I was just like, I hear you, but I don't know, is this really you, you know, like, that that came in that doubt, right? And God started revealing himself, revealing things to me. I, I was actually like, I saw a vision of, I was on like a plateau, it was like, I could see like the, the valley and I could see like the top of a mountain. So I was like, kind of like in between, right? And I was on like a plateau and I remember, um, I saw myself, I was wide awake in my closet as a matter of fact. And um, I remember I, I saw myself on the plateau and I saw like these big hands like pushing me, like pushing me towards the end, pushing me towards the end. And I was dragging my feet. I was digging my feet into the ground because I was just like, Mm-mm, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. Like, and I just remember saying, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet, God. I'm not ready yet. Um, but all I said, like I said, all I saw was these big hands pushing me towards the edge of the uh, edge of the plateau. And when I got all the way to the end of the plateau, I heard a voice and it said, either because I was like nope I'm not ready I'm not ready I'm not ready you know and I heard a voice it's as clear as you can hear my voice right now I heard God say either you jump or I'm going to push you he said and if I push you it's gonna if you jump it's gonna be easier if I push you it's gonna be hard and I'll never forget that and when after um after that vision I actually like saw myself in this light like it was just a massive light around me and it was just like bright like the brightest light I've ever seen literally but I was in my closet so it wasn't even a bright light it was like regular lighting and it scared me it scared me like no other um because I had never seen myself in that light. I had never seen myself that way before. And it scared me. It scared me so much I started crying. And I immediately started doubting myself. I immediately went into the space of, I can't do that. I don't know how I'm going to do that. How, 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 who am I to do that? I immediately went into the space of, I, 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 I. I can't. I I don't have the uh, the ability to do that. I can't um, fathom myself seeing myself doing that. I I I. It was all about me, and I immediately went into that space because that's all I knew. That's all I knew was Samantha can do it. Either Samantha can do it or she can't. I wasn't in the space where I trusted God fully yet. I was growing in my relationship and still am, but I wasn't in that space where it was like full flown out trust, right? And so I started doubting myself. I started doubting myself and my abilities. And the more I thought about it, as God led me to speak about this, I'm like, we all actually doubt ourselves, no matter what level you're on, no matter where God is calling you to, you're always going to doubt yourself before you go to another level. Every single time. Every single time. You just got to learn to recognize the doubts and push past them faster, right? But we all do it. We all tend to focus on what we can do. We focus on what we can do not what God will do through us, not what God is going to, not how God is going to use us, not with God backing us, not with God pushing us and being there for us to help us through. 
No, we always think about how we can do it. And that's why so many of us don't do what God is saying. It's why so many of us are so afraid and we allow our doubts to keep us stuck in a space of stagnancy, not doing what God's telling us to do because we focus more on ourselves than we are on him. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. And that's why I I, I tell y'all every week, like, these Wednesday Wisdom Talks, I ain't coming for nobody. I ain't coming for nobody because I live it. Either I've lived it or I'm still living it and I'm getting through it with y'all. Right? This is, I, I trust God more now and I doubt myself sometimes still, but I trust him. Right? So it helps me really push past the doubts. But like I said, we all are guilty of believing in ourselves less, right? And as a result, we don't believe in God fully and his power and his abilities. So we go into this space of doubt and we end up being disobedient. We end up turning away from God. We end up doing things that are not in God's will. We end up doing stuff that God didn't tell us to do. Or we end up in a place of just being stuck, stuck in a place too long, being somewhere long where we don't belong. Right. I remember when God first told me to uh, move to Wisconsin. And so I didn't know anybody here. I, I, I knew one person, but I didn't know that person. Like I just knew they were here. Um, I, I found out later after God told me to move, but I knew they were here, but I didn't know them. Like we hadn't had conversations like that. None of that. One person. All I knew was Atlanta, right? And when God first told me to move, you know, I had no clue what was in store for me. I knew he had called, he was calling me to um, help someone build a ministry. But I also, you know, like that's really it. That's all I knew. He was calling me to help somebody come build a ministry. I didn't know how to do it. I ain't know what to do. I didn't know when. I ain't know nothing. I didn't know anything. And it sounds crazy. Faith sounds crazy when you start walking in it. Honestly, people think you lost your mind, but it is what it is. I didn't, I didn't know anything. I just said, well, God told me to do it. But I, you know, and I, I went into the space immediately. I started going into that space of, I never built a ministry. I, I never taught anybody the Bible. I, I'm learning the Bible myself. I am, I, I never thought that I saved somebody's soul before. I, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to minister to people. I don't know how to preach the word. What? Immediately. I immediately went into that space of me. Me. I'm like, I don't know how to minister the word to people and save them. Because I'm learning the word myself. <laughs> I'm learning the word myself. How is it I'm going to go help somebody else learn it? I immediately went into that space of, I can't do that. The doubts start taking over, trying trying to take over my mind, right? And hold me in that space. I started to, I, I didn't have that example to follow. I didn't have a blueprint. It was just me. So naturally, I started to doubt myself. Naturally, I started to doubt myself. I doubted my capabilities. And even though I had a, a relationship with God at this time, I doubted his abilities, so I doubted God's abilities and my capabilities. But all I knew was God told me to do something. And I knew that I had made a vow that I was going to trust God. And I was no longer going to allow my doubts to stop me and keep me in a space of stagnancy and being stuck in my life anymore. I knew that I said that I wanted the life that God promised me. So I knew that whatever I needed to face to get to what he promised me or start walking towards it, 
I was going to have to do it. So if that meant I needed to swallow the doubts, swallow the insecurities, suck it up, buttercup, and make the move, then that's what I had to do. I couldn't allow my doubts to take over. I couldn't allow my faith, the, the wave, my wavering faith to take over. <laughs> you of little faith, Dealing with doubt. We all do it. We all doubt God. And I don't know if some of you on here, you may doubt God because you can't see him. I don't know. Like, I can't speak for you. But I know that we all guilty of it. Right? We all doubt God. And... And I know I'll, I'll just continue to speak on my story. Every time God has tried to take me higher, I always go back. It's funny, right? Like, wow, like you, God is taking you here, but you want to go here. Like, that's weird. <laughs> anyway, um, I always try to go back to the mindset of I. I, can I do this? What do I need to do to make this happen? What, what do I need to do to figure this out? How can I do this on my own? I always, the doubt creeps in. I always tend to go back into the spaces that are comfortable. My mind has been stretched so much at this point, but we're talking about then, right? It takes time for you to stretch your mind past what you've known all your life. It takes intentionality to stretch your mind past everything that you've known as normal all your life. You think it's normal to doubt yourself because everybody else does it. But that's it's not normal. That's not what God wants you to do. God doesn't want you to doubt yourself. God doesn't want you to doubt him. You got to go against the grain, against what you've known all your life so that you can do what God's telling you to do. And like I said, guilty. Guilty. The longer you and I the longer we believe that we have to do it all on our own, in our power, in our might, in our strength, in our abilities alone, the longer we believe that it's just us, then we're going to continue to doubt ourselves. We're going to continue to live in a space of fear. We're going to continue to be stagnant. We're going to continue to be disobedient. We're going to continue being stuck. Doubt only hinders, I mean, doubt hinders your faith. It hinders your prayer life. It hinders your walk with God and it hinders your obedience. So it's not helping you at all. Right? And I get it. Things happen that's going to cause your faith to waver. Things happen that, that cause your faith to waver. You praying that God answer your prayers. You know you need something answered by tomorrow. You know you need this money to pay this bill or whatever by tomorrow. And it doesn't happen. You automatically start doubting. You automatically go into a space of doubting God. And you go into the space of trying to figure life out on your own. Automatically. Your mind is set up that way. Your mind is, I read this in a book, your mind is actually set up to keep you from going to, I'm summarizing it, but it's, it's basically set up to protect you. So like your, it, it, if it knows a certain space and place and time or whatever, doesn't cause you a risk or push, push you at risk. It's naturally, when you try to stretch beyond it, it naturally tries to shut it down. 
and protect you. Your mind is literally set up to do that. So anytime God is telling you to do something and you know you have these challenges and it doesn't happen, your mind is automatically like, nope, let's shut it down. Because if I believe anything beyond that, that's putting me at risk. Right? So you got the things that's going to happen that's going to challenge your faith. And I get it. Your faith is going to be challenged. You know, it, it doesn't mean that. I wouldn't say that uh, you don't believe God. You just doubt yourself and you doubt God's abilities. But it, it happened way before us. It's so many stories in the Bible of people that doubted God. So many. Right? You're naturally going into a, like, you know how many times, you probably don't know, but how often I have to say, God, I believe, but help my unbelief. God, I trust, like I literally sometimes, because God is stretching me so much some, in some areas that my faith is being stretched massively. And I have to say, like, God, I trust you. I believe. I trust you, God. I believe. I trust you, God. I believe. Like, constantly. It's like on repeat. Because if I don't do that, I'm going to go back into the space of what's comfortable. My mind tries to keep me in that space so it won't stretch further. So I have to constantly remind myself, I trust you, God. I trust you, God. I trust your time and I trust your will. I trust you, God. I trust you. So I don't doubt. So I don't go back into a space of doubt. God, I believe, but help my unbelief. Help me to not waver in my faith, Lord. Because I know you're going to show up. It may not be when I want it. It may not happen how I want it. But I know that's what you said. So I trust you. I trust you. And I, this is every day. Through, in the morning, throughout the day, and at night. I got to say, God, I, I trust you. I trust what your word says. I trust your promises. And I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to stand on what you said. I'm going to stand on your word. And I will not waver in my faith. So that I won't go back into a space of doubt. Doubting myself. Doubting my capabilities and doubting your ability. The Bible says, uh, transform your mind. Uh, transform your mind. Be, be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, meaning you have to transform your mind every day. You have to remind, you have to put God's word in your mind every day. So that you can, your mind will be fresh. It stays alert. Constantly. Because the, the devil wants you to get into a space of doubt. Because what did I say? Doubt hinders your faith. Doubt hinders your belief. Doubt hinders your prayer life. Doubt hinders your obedience. Doubt hinders your walk with God. So why wouldn't the devil want you to stay in that space of constantly doubting yourself? And like I said, the thing is, don't beat yourself up. Because you're not the only one. You're not the only one, right? I've done it. I have to constantly refresh my mind, renew my mind, or transform my mind daily so I won't go back into that space. But it, in the Bible, there are several stories, several stories of people that doubted God. Let's take it to Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah, I believe, is in Genesis, if I'm not mistaken. I can't tell you the exact chapter. But anyway, you know, if you know the story of Abraham and Sarah, they were well in their age. They wanted a kid they, or kids, whatever. And well in their age, they ended up, you know, Sarah gave Abraham permission to um, go and sleep with her servant he had a kid by the servant. Uh, Sarah got jealous, whatever, whatever, that, whatever. 
They were well in their age, 90s, 100s. And still want, they had given up on wanting a child. But God came to them and told them, listen, you're going to have a kid. God went to Abraham and told him, your wife is going to be pregnant. Well, she's going to have a son. Sarah laughed. Because she's like, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Like, come on. Come on, guy. Like, I'm 100 years old. So she instantly doubted God. She instantly doubted God. Think about when you, I don't know, Zacharias in the Bible, right? Zacharias is in, let me tell y'all where it is exactly. Ooh. Zacharias, the story of Zacharias. I'll tell you the story. Um, same kind of story as, yeah, I mean, it's in Zechariah, the book of Zechariah, sorry, but it's the same similar story to Abraham and Sarah. Him and his wife, older, in age, and God went to him and told him, you're going to have a child. And they both doubted God, actually. Um, they had been, you know, trying for a kid. Sorry, some in my eye. They had been trying for a kid for years. Um, and, and I don't know if they were trying because it don't say that in the Bible, but I know they wanted a child, right? And the angel of God goes to him and tells him, hey, you're going to have a son. I'm going to bless your, your wife, Elizabeth, with the son. But both of them uh, have been trying so long. Like they were like, yeah, whatever. Whatever. I'm going to. I don't believe that, God. I don't believe that. <laughs> and at the end of the day, I mean, if you don't know the story, Sarah ended up having a son. Zachariah and Elizabeth ended up having a son, right? But at, my point is, they both doubted God initially because they went into the space of I. Sarah, well in age, I can't do that. I can't even bear kids anymore. My body old, parts don't work. What? Immediately went into I. Zachariah, his wife, immediately went into I. We can't do that. Be older. And I got one more. Gideon. The book of Gideon, well, it ain't the book, but it's in Judges. Judges chapter, uh, Judges chapter, um, Six. Judges chapter 6, right? Talks about Gideon. Chapter 6, verses uh, 16, no, 14 through 16. I didn't write them all down. But anyway, Judges talks about Gideon. Gideon goes to, God comes to Gideon and tells him, hey, you know, I want you to uh, bring Israel, Israel, Israel out of oppression. I want to bring, I want you to bring them out of oppression. And Gideon is like, mm, me? I, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that. Right? And he says, you know, he doubted God. In, in chapter 6, verse 13, he says, Gideon doubted God. If you're with us, he asked him, he said, if you're with us, God, if you're with us, then why have you allowed all of this to happen? How often have you asked the same thing? God, if you really hear, and you really hear my prayers, why you ain't answer? Why you ain't get this bill paid when I need to be paid? Why you ain't bring me my husband when I said bring me my husband, God? Or my wife or whatever. Why? Why, why you let this person die? How many have done the same thing? If you really with us, God, if you really here, like you say you are, then why why you let this happen? This is Gideon talking back to God. 
the angel went to him and told him, listen, you're going to save the people. And he's like, but I don't even believe that you're really here. I don't believe that because if you was really here, why you even let him get into this oppression? Why you even let him get into this place of despair where now I got to go in and save him? And he, he got to the point, he asked God for three signs. God told him, listen, I'm with you. Because Gideon doubted himself. He's like, first of all, if you really here, why you let this happen? Secondly, who am I to do that? Who am I? He doubted his own capabilities. He doubted his own capabilities. So he asked God for three signs, three different signs of show me that it's real, that you really saying do this, that you really with me, that you hear. Three signs. And man, listen, that story, when I first read Gideon, I was like, ooh, I am guilty. Because I have asked God multiple times. God, show me a sign. If this is really, if this is really you, Show me a sign. Show me, like, I need confirmation. Like, multiple times. I get it one time. But I'm talking about multiple times. I've asked, just like Gideon did. He needed multiple signs to, for God to show him that he was with him. And I, I've done the same thing before. I remember when God told me, Samantha, I want you to get to the place where you don't, you trust my voice and trust me so much that you don't need the confirmation before you actually start moving. I want you to get moving and then I'll give you the confirmation. But you trust me so much. You don't doubt. You trust me so much. That you take steps forward before I show you confirmation. And at the end of the day, that's what God wants from you too. That's the same thing God wants from all of us. We, we constantly say, oh, wait no God, wait no God, wait no God, wait no God. But at the end of the day, God waiting on you. God waiting on you to move first. God waiting on you to trust him. Stop doubting him. Stop doubting yourself and go forward so he can meet you on the other side. He waiting on you. But you so busy doubting. You're like doubting Thomas. But if you notice something, every story I just told you about that was in the Bible, and there's several more examples of how people before us doubted God. But every story, if you notice, every story that I just told you about all related to they doubted themselves. Therefore, it caused them to doubt God. Sarah doubted her ability to have a child because she was like 99. Elizabeth doubted her ability to carry a child because she too was older. And even Zachariah, her husband, right? Um, Gideon, he doubted his ability to save the nation. And as a result, he doubted, was God even there? So the common denominator is we doubt ourselves. We doubt ourselves and our abilities because we think it's just us. And as a result, we end up doubting God. And then we pray in these prayers. And like, but yet we don't even believe that God going to show up. We don't even believe that he going to show up because we so busy doubting. We so busy doubting ourselves. We so busy doubting him. And we stand in that space of doubt. And guess what? We're hindering our prayers. Because the Bible says, ask me, you shall receive, right? But, I'm sorry, y'all. Um, but it, it, it let it be done as you have believed. 
Let it be done as you have believed. But if you don't believe it and you doubt it, how's it going to be done? The Bible says, asking you shall receive. But it also says, anything you ask according to my will, and you believe, <laughs> and you believe that it shall, it will be done, then it will be done. That's the key. You got to believe that it's going to happen. You got to stop doubting God. Stop doubting yourself. Stop doubting yourself so you can stop doubting God. Yeah, give me one second. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry, y'all. My nose running. Um, sinus is draining. But anyway, stop doubting yourself so that you can start down, stop doubting God. You of little faith. James, verse one and two. Oh, verse one, chapter two. Yeah. Yeah, it's several examples of doubt. People that doubted God in the Bible. Several. But you got to stop doubting yourself so that you can start moving forward and doing what God is telling you to do. The more you doubt, the less you're moving forward. The less you're doing what God called you to do. You're living in doubt and God is saying, trust me, I'm with you. Just like he told Gideon. I'm with you. All you got to do is trust me, though. One of my favorite Bible verses as of late has, be has, has uh, become Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6, if I'm not mistaken. Let me make sure. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6. Since God says, you have been at this mountain. He says, you have stayed long enough at this mountain. Deuteronomy chapter 1, yeah. Chapter 1, verse 6. You have stayed long enough at this mountain. It's time for you to get up and go into your promised land. You have stayed long enough at this mountain. And the next verse says, I want you to get up. And he says, that's Samantha's words. But it says... Break camp in advance into the hill country of the Amorites. Go to all the neighboring people in Arabah, in the mountains, in the western foothills, in the whatever, and along the coast to the land. Basically, because I can't pronounce all those words, but basically telling them, get up. You've been here long enough. Get up and go where I'm telling you to go. What you think he's saying to you? Get up and go. You've been at this mountain of doubt long enough. You've been in this space of doubt long enough. I keep seeing the question pop up. How do I know it's God? How do I know it's God? How do I know it's God? Get in his word. Get in his word. Spend time with him. The same way you spend time with somebody else that you want to build a relationship with. You you go into the store, and if you a mom or a dad, you go into the store. Your kid go somewhere that ain't that's not necessarily uh, right by you. You're going to know their voice if they call your name. Believe that. It could be a thousand other kids in that store, but you're gonna know your child's voice. Just like if you're in a relationship. You're going to know the voice of your mate. You're going to know the voice of your mate. You're going to know the voice of, you know, your friend. Right? Get in his word. Spend time with him. So you can get to know his voice. The Bible says my sheep will know my voice. You know. 
And it may not be an audible voice. It comes, God speaks in multiple ways. It could come from confirmation. This video could be confirmation for somebody right now. It could come from a song you might, you might have prayed about something and then you turn on the radio or turn on some music and the song says something along the lines of what you just prayed about. It could come from a person. Use your gift of discernment. You have it. Stop ignoring it. Because the devil sent people to destroy you and God sent people to, to, to take you higher. You got to use you got to use your discernment to discern who sent who. Use your discernment. Talking about how, how you know God's voice. Listen. He talking all the time. You just ain't listening. God don't never stop talking. Ever. You just don't want to hear what he's saying. Because nine times out of ten, God telling you to do something that you don't want to do. Nine times out of ten, he telling you to get rid of people that you don't want to get rid of. Nine times out of ten, he telling you to move in a direction that takes you away from your comfort zone. And you don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. Thank you, Patricia Chambers, for a badge. I appreciate you. But you don't want to do it. Then you wonder why God ain't talking. He, he told you. He was talking. You just ain't listening. How many people you know finna keep talking and you don't listen? Would you keep talking if somebody wasn't listening to you? Absolutely not. And you ain't finna sit here and tell me that you would. The same way you want to get to know a man or a woman that you interested in pursuing a relationship with, get in God's face the same way. You want to hear his voice, get in his face so you can hear it. Because that I'm sick of the excuse of, I can't hear God. I don't hear God talking. How you know it's God? Get in his word. It's a whole book. It's a whole book. Like, I'm sorry. That just gets under my skin. Because it ain't like God ain't talking to y'all. He talking. You just ain't listening to him. You don't want to leave that person alone. So, I'm going to tune God out. Oh, now I don't hear God's voice. I don't want to get out of this relationship yet. I don't want to walk away from this friendship. I don't want to. I don't want to let go of my doubt yet. I want to keep doubting God. What, what you think he going to keep telling you? Listen, listen, listen. Hey, I'm here. Listen, I'm here. No. You hear him? You just don't want to listen. So stop saying you ain't hearing God because he's talking. You just ain't listening. So put, put it back on yourself because you ain't listening. Go back and do what God told you to do the first time. When you start listening and you start being obedient, I guarantee you, you'll start hearing his voice more. I guarantee you, you will. Okay. Anyway. In true form, we're going to, we trying to break these chains, Right. I want to help y'all come out of these spaces. I am, it's frustrating to me, honestly, because it's so many people who are just bound by the devil. So many people who allow the devil to just bind up their minds and keep them in a place of stuck and stagnancy. You allow these doubts to stay in your mind. You constantly doubt God. And, and God ain't never let you down. Ever. But you will sit up and trust your friends more than you trust God. You will trust your family more than you trust God. Is it because you can see them? You can touch them? But I guarantee you some of your friends done let you down before. I guarantee you somebody in your family has let you down before. I guarantee you that. I put money on it. And God ain't never, not one time, let you down. He may not, he may not answer when you wanted him to. He may not answer the way you wanted him to, but did he let you down? Did he let you down? And I promise you, you can't say yes to that question. I'm willing to bet money on it. 
God ain't never let you down. Right? So why are you doubting? Why are you doubting? Why do you doubt yourself? Dig deep into that. Like straight up. Why do I doubt myself? Why do I believe in more people than I do me? Dig deep into that. Find the answer to that. Because you, you, you will believe in everybody else except you. You will pour into them. You believe that they can do it. And they, they, you can too. You can too. I ain't no different than none of y'all on this live. I may be different in some of my ways and some of the things that I do. But listen, I'm Samantha. I'm from College Park, Georgia. I went, to, I went to high school. I went to college. I got my college degree. I got my master's degree. I worked. I did. Same thing most of y'all can relate to. I've been in some sucker duck relationships. I have done some sucker duck things in my life. I have done some horrible things in my life. I ain't no different. I just choose to say I'm, I'm sick of that life. Right? Um, absolutely. So, if y'all got questions, I can't read all your comments right now. But if you got questions, comments, you know, we can dive into them, right? But I ain't no different. Like I said, I may think differently than some of y'all now. Because, but I've worked on myself. <laughs> well, I've allowed God to do a work within me to get me to this place to think differently. To get me to the place where I trust him completely. This has taken years. What you see today, this has taken years. So my point is, I used to be just like some of y'all. I just think differently now. I move differently now. I, I do things differently because I want different for me and my kids. So I refuse to continue to live the life that I was living, doing the things that I was doing because it wasn't working for me. And I made that decision. Therefore, I'm not going back to it because I made a decision that I'm going to trust God and I'm going after the promises that God has told me that I can have because I get in his word and I know what he says. Therefore, I believe it. So I'm not sitting up and allowing doubt to hold me down no more. I used to doubt myself constantly because I didn't have somebody speaking life into me. I didn't have somebody telling me you can do it. I believe in you. I, you, I ain't have that. So I, I didn't see my potential. I didn't believe in myself. So I ain't no different. I ain't no different. I've just fought hard to get where I am in my mindset. I fought hard to get where I am in my life. I fought hard to get where I am in my relationship with God because I want it bad enough. I always tell people, you either you either want it or you don't. Because if you don't, you're going to keep making excuses as to why it ain't happening for you. But when you want something bad enough, you will go after it. You'll do whatever you need to do legally, of course, to make it happen when you want it bad enough. You don't want it bad enough yet. If you can't hear from God and God talking to you, he's, he's speaking every day. That means you don't want to hear from him. You don't want it bad enough. Because cause if you did, you would figure out how. What do I need to do in my life? What do I need to get rid of? Who do I need to get rid of? Whatever. What's holding me back, God, from hearing your voice clearly? And you would do it. You would stop making the excuses. And you would say, listen, I want to hear God's voice so clear that I'm willing to do whatever I need to do. Remove the noise, God. Remove the distractions so that I can hear you crystal clear. You speak. I don't want to hear nobody else speak but you. I'm willing to do. You can move whoever you need to out of my life. 
I got to that point. Remove them. If it ain't from you, I don't want it. Period. So I ain't no different than some of y'all on this live. I said all that to say. I've gone through the space of doubting myself constantly. I've gone through the space of not believing in myself. I've gone through the space of living to please the world. I've gone through all of the insecurities, lacking confidence. I've, I've been there, done it. I ain't, I ain't no different. I just chose to make different decisions. But how can you get to that place where you're no longer doubting God, where you're no longer doubting yourself? Because like I said earlier, it may be that you doubt yourself so much that you end up doubting God. But how can you get to a space where you're no longer doubting yourself and you're doubting God at the same time? The first thing is, Fight the devil's lies. The devil is a liar, period. Everything of the devil is a lie. You ain't worthy. You can't do that. You can't handle this. You can't build a ministry. You can't, you can't, you can't. It's a lie. You can't build that business. You can't get out of that relationship. You can't make it on your own. You can't. It's a lie. Because if God said you can do it, you can do it. Period. Period. You got to fight the devil's lies. How you fight the devil's lies, Samantha? Get into the word. Get into the word. This is your sword. This is how you fight the devil. Period. Get into the word. Get in God's face. Seek his presence. How you fight the devil's lies? Let me start learning what God said about me. Let me... Hmm. If he said that I am more than a conqueror, then that means I can conquer everything that comes for me. If God said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, that means whatever the enemy throwing at me it ain't going to prosper. It may form, but it may it ain't going to prosper. If this is what God said, if God said, I'm with you everywhere you go, I am the lamp upon your feet, the light upon your path. My angels have already made the way for you. If that's what God said, believe it. That's, that's what he said. Believe it. I don't know how I'm going to build a ministry. Well, God called me to it. God said he already, he the left upon my feet. I can't see the next step. I can't see what I'm doing and which way I'm supposed to go. I just know if I keep my eyes on God because he already lit the path. He already made the way. The angel went before me. Therefore, the path is already paved for me to go. All I got to do is allow God to be the light upon my feet. Cause that's what he said and let him lead my footsteps because I, I ain't no to, to this day I'm just out here trusting God I don't be knowing what I'm doing I just do what God tell me to do I just do what he tell me to do and I fight the lies off from the devil I just don't allow it to get into my mind I fight the devil's lies Start paying attention to the words that you say to yourself that nobody else hears. You think it's just words. Words are called, it's called spelling for a reason. You're casting a spell over yourself when you speak certain words. I used to say, I, I don't even like to say it anymore. Um, I used to say, I am B-R-O-K-E. All the time. 
People would ask me, oh, let's do this. Let's go this. Let's go here. Let's do whatever. Nope, I'm B-R-O-K-E. I can't go. I can't do it. And guess what? I used to stay B-R-O-K-E. <laughs> I don't even like to speak that over my life no more. Because nope, it ain't no joke. It ain't no joke. Y'all think these words that you speak don't matter. But it does. They do matter. And so I stopped saying that stuff over myself. Because I'm like, that ain't what God said about me. Therefore, I ain't finna say it either. God said he want me to have a life of abundance. I live in a land of plenty. I lack nothing. Therefore, I don't like no money. <laughs> mm -mm. Cause God said, I live in a land of plenty. The promised land that he, he taken the Israelites to, I'm just putting myself in their place. The promised land that he taking them to, he said, listen, where I'm taking you, you're going to have more than enough. You will never for generations to come. Thousands of generations. That means you, your kids, your kids, your kids, your kids, they kids, they kids, they kids, they kids, they kids for thousands of generations. Because that's what God said. I, I don't like nothing. I ain't finna believe that. I, I got to come against the, what the devil telling me. You ain't going to tell me, devil, that I can't build no ministry. Samantha, you ain't, never built no, you ain't never did this. You ain't got nobody in your family that's ever built some ministry. Half of your family don't even go hard for God like that. So how you think you finna go in here and change the mindset of your family? How you think you finna introduce them to God? How you think you finna show them how to pray? Show them how to read the word? Like real talk. How you think you finna do that? How you think you gonna do that? You ain't never did. You ain't got nobody to show you how to do it. How you gonna do it? Cause God gonna lead me. I'm fighting them. I fight the lies. We always talking about ourselves to ourselves. And it's, be careful what you're saying, cause you always listening. You always listening, right? We always having an internal conversation. We influence ourselves more than anybody else does. We we listen to what we say more than and what and hear what we say more than anybody else. So many people speak negatively over themselves because they they end up believing the lies that the devil telling them, and they and they sit up and go come into agreement with it. Even when you say stuff jokingly, like, oh, um, girl, that, that killed me. That was so funny. Kid. No, it didn't. I remember when one time my daughter was, uh, she called me or she texted me something, I forget, but she and my mom were watching something on television. Uh, I think it was Family Feud. And uh, the question uh, was something along the lines of, like, what would you, it was something like, what would you sell your soul or something like that, right? It, I'm, I, I, I don't remember exactly, but it was something along those lines, right? And my mom texts me and telling me, you know, what my daughter said. And she says, oh, well, Raya, that's my daughter's name. She's like, oh, Raya said, well, I would, I would give my soul for a million dollars. God, I'm just, I'm, I'm not saying that out, please. Uh, and something like that. And, and they laughed. She texted in the group of uh, me and my sisters. And they thought it was funny. And I said, nope, nope, nope. I bind it up. Absolutely not. We ain't finna speak that over my child life. Absolutely not. She ain't gonna speak it and I ain't even finna let y'all come into agreement with it. You think it's funny. And I immediately was like, nope, I bind it up in the name of Jesus. She will not speak that over her life. And they they, they got on me. Well, it's just a TV show. She was just being funny. Nope, that ain't funny. There ain't nothing about that funny. You are not finna speak that over your life, baby girl. And then you and y'all... And I'm going to call you out for thinking that it's funny. That it's just a joke. And then come when she, 15 years later, here it is, something happening to her soul. Because she said when she was 10, she would sell her soul. No, absolutely not. You think these words are a joke. 
has your doubting started to cause you to begin to believe things that are not true? And therefore, you start saying things that are not true over your life. You start saying things about yourself that are not true because you're doubting yourself and you're doubting God. You believe in the, the lies of the devil and you're doubting. Fighting the devil's lies means that you got to start being aware. Being aware of the talk that's coming from your heart. Be aware of the talk that's coming from your thoughts. I always say it starts as a thought, comes out as, comes out, uh, uh, as words, words turns into actions. You got to start being aware of what you're speaking from your mind from your heart. When you fill yourself up with God's word, you start speaking God's word over your life. You start speaking the truth over yourself. That's how you come against what the devil is saying. You start coming against the lies that the devil is telling you. <laughs> Ask God to give you insight into your heart. Ask God to help you examine your heart. Help you see you. Ask God to help you examine your own heart. And give you the strength to fight the spiritual battle that is going on. It's a war for your soul. God want it and the devil want it. It's a war. When you got to start fighting. Otherwise, you're going to keep losing. Start fighting the devil's lies. Have you allowed the lies of the enemy whispered to you in a struggle, whispered to you in a time of desperation or despair? Have you allowed those lies to come into your mind and start sowing seeds of doubt against God? Fight the devil's lies. They're not true. The second thing you can do to um, start stop doubting yourself, stop doubting God, is to start counting your blessings. Start being grateful for what you have. We tend to focus so much on what we don't have. We focus so much on what we want. Versus focusing and sitting in the space of what we have. Where you are today could very well be answered prayers from something you prayed for years ago. Or, thank you Holy Spirit, it could be some words that you spoke over yourself years ago. Like I said, I used to say I was B-R-O-K-E all the time. And I used to always be that. I used to always be there. <laughs> always. And it was like, this ain't something I prayed for. I didn't pray to be broke. But it was like a reminder, like, but you used to say it all the time. You used to tell you. You used to say that you were all the time. So start counting your blessings. To help you come out of doubt, be grateful for where you are and for what you currently have. Be grateful for how God has brought you through everything that you've been through. The moments you thought you weren't going to make it through. Be grateful. Start thinking about, bring to remembrance how God has kept you. And start being grateful God, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I'm alive. I'm grateful, Lord, that you use me the way that you do. I'm grateful, Lord, to be a light. I'm grateful, Lord, to, to show my kids a new avenue, a new lane. I'm grateful, God, that you are forever faithful. I'm grateful, God, that you've never left my side. I'm grateful, God, to have a, a roof over my head. I'm, it, it, it may be a struggle sometimes for me to pay the mortgage or rent, I'm speaking to somebody, right? But God, I'm grateful. 
There's a roof over my head. I'm grateful I got food in my refrigerator. I'm grateful. When you start being grateful, you have a thankful heart. Your heart starts coming th becoming thankful, right? And uh, the more your heart becomes thankful, the less it's going to be doubtful. Because you bring into remembrance the blessings that God has blessed you with. So it's hard for you to doubt God at that point. <laughs> it's hard for you to doubt yourself. The more you start being grateful and the more you give God thanks and have an attitude of gratitude, the more you start to really believe in him and you start to believe in his power through you. So it's hard to be doubtful when you're grateful. Start bringing to remembrance, recounting the, the God's presence, how he's been there for you over the years, his faithfulness, his promises, his provision. Start bringing it to remembrance, his reliability. God's word constantly reminds us of who he is. That's why I tell y'all, get in the word. No matter how much you doubt, there's always something to be thankful for. There's always some blessings that you can thank God for. No matter how much you may doubt. Right? Count your blessings. Name them one by one. That's a song. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. And if you can't do it by yourself, ask God to help you. YVE Trobe says, it's a remember, remember that someone who wished they had what we have, if, if you want to complain, I always think of that. I always, when I even start to complain, I'm doing a challenge with a couple of young, a uh, couple of people right now. We, at my last uh, live, we talked about no excuses. And, we, and I said, we're going to do a 30 day challenge of no excuses. And we're going to do no complaining at the same time. Right. And every time I, I've gotten into this space of, A, I just try not to complain. I don't make excuses because I'm just like, my yes is yes, my no is no, right? But I have sometimes wanted to complain throughout this challenge. It's like when you know God is taking you to another level, it's like everything tries to come at you to make you waver in whatever it is that you believe in God for. And um, in, the, in the challenge, I'm like, you know, no complaining, no complaining. And I always think like the nerve of me. Whenever something comes at me that makes me want to complain, it's like the nerve of you, Samantha. Like, are you serious? How are you really going to complain when God has been as good as he has to you? The nerve of you to complain. Count your blessings. And we, we have the group. I'm sending out, you know, that. I talk to them. We, I send an email, you know, not every day, but I, you know, I'm, I'm helping them through like no excuses, no complaining. But I'm saying that to say like, whenever you want to complain, whenever you want to start making excuses as to why not the nerve of you, has God not been good enough? Has God not been faithful enough? The nerve of you to actually want to complain. And if you can't do it alone, like I was saying, if you can't do this alone by asking God, by being in the space of having an attitude of gratitude, then ask God to help you. He'll help you. He'll help you. I want you to take time today and every day going forward. I'm challenging you all. 
Again, I want you to take time today and every day going forward to stop complaining and think about the blessings. Think about the many blessings that God has given you. Think about how good God has been in your life. Because the more you focus on God, the more you focus on God's beauty, the less you're going to sit up and focus on doubting yourself and doubting God, who God is. The more you focus on how God has shown up, the more you focus on how faithful he is, the more you focus on his grace, the more you focus on God, the less you're going to sit up and doubt yourself. The less you're going to doubt God. All right, third way. The third way you can stop doubting yourself and stop doubting God is to confess your struggle. Confess your struggle to believe. Like I said earlier, God, I believe, but help my unbelief. There are moments where my faith may waver. But I trust you, God. Therefore, help my unbelief. Confess it. God knows this walk ain't easy. God knows it. it, it, it if it were easy, everyone would be doing it. He knows that you, your faith is going to waver sometimes. He knows that you're going to doubt sometimes. You're human. Confess it. Confess your struggle to believe. God, listen, my faith is wavering right now, but I trust you because your word said X, Y, Z, I shall lack no good thing. Your word said whatever you want to fill it in with. So help me to not waver in my faith. Help my unbelief. I'm telling you, Lord, I'm wavering. I'm telling you, Lord, I ain't believing right now. I'm doubting a little bit because things ain't looking like you said. But I'm, I'm confessing it to you. Because you ain't surprised that I'm struggling in this area. Because you already know. You already knew I would. <laughs> you already knew. So I'm confessing it to you. That, yeah, this is an area, God, that I need a little help. I need a little help. I'm telling you now, I, I, I struggle with trusting you. I'm telling you now, I, not me, God, but I'm telling you now that I, I, I have some doubts sometimes. I don't believe all the time, God, but I need you to help me. I'm confessing my sin. I'm confessing that to you. God is not surprised by your struggle with the doubt. God is not surprised by your weakness in certain areas. Because, again, he knows <laughs> it ain't easy. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. Right? But instead of criticizing you for being weak, instead of, you know, condemning you for being weak, God draws you near. He takes you in and loves you through that and helps you through the unbelief. Just like he told Gideon in the Bible, he said, I'm with you. God brings you close to let you know, hey, I'm with you. You don't have to doubt because I'm with you. You don't have to doubt because I'm with you. When you feel the most unable, that's when you draw closer to God so that you won't start doubting him. You may not feel able by yourself, that's, but that's when you draw closer so that you won't start doubting him. Don't run away from him. Draw closer to him. 
So he can help your unbelief. He can help your doubts become uh, faith. You can actually stand firm in your faith and you stop wavering in your unbelief. You stop wavering in and, and doubting yourself and doubting him. When you confess your struggle to believe in the midst of it, in the midst of you suffering and, and, and you doubting, God welcomes you. He embraces you. He embraces you. He doesn't push you away. He don't knock you for doubting. He don't knock you for being human. He pulls you closer. He ain't judging you. He just pulling you closer to him. So, and the closer you get, the more you're going to feel his presence, the more you're going to be wrapped in his arms, the more you're going to know that he is with you. And you don't have a reason to doubt. The more you'll start hearing his voice, the more you're going to start being obedient, the more you're obedient, right? The less you're going to doubt. Because God, God will start showing you. He's with you. So the less you're going to doubt. God wants you to be honest. Just like I said earlier. It's just like building a relationship with somebody else. On this earth. Whether it's a friend, significant other, whatever. You want them to be honest. You all want each other to be honest. You want to build a foundation on honesty, transparency, loyalty, we spend time together. We get to know each other better. It's the same thing with God. I don't know why we make it, why people, it's make it difficult to build a relationship with God. This is, you know, I mean, you, of course you have the world coming against you or trying to come against you and, and knock you for going in a different direction. But it's, it's, and people don't understand like, how, how did you do it? How do you do it? It's the same way you build a relationship with somebody else. It's really no different. It's really no different. God welcomes you to be honest. And he's always going to have mercy upon you. Because he's so faithful. He's just so faithful. His grace and his mercy are just forever. So he has mercy upon you. Because you... He knows you don't, you're going to waver sometimes. He knows that you don't understand his timing. He knows that you need answers. <laughs> he knows. So your faith is going to waver sometimes. But he just, just telling, like, God, listen, I need help. I need help in this area. He ain't going to judge you for it. So when you tend to struggle in your faith, you tend to start doubting God. Do you run to God or do you run away from God? I've asked y'all a couple of questions. I want you to, I hope you write them down. So you can start asking yourself these questions and be truthful. Answer them. Right? The fourth way you can start to stop doubting God. Stop doubting yourself. Get busy. Start doing what God is telling you to do. Get busy. Stop being afraid of if God is calling you to do something. Start believing that at the end of the day, either he going to take this step, either he going to catch me, or... He going to make a way that I don't fall. One or the other, I know God got me. So I'm going to get busy doing what he told me to do. I'm going to be obedient because delayed obedience is still disobedience. So the longer you not doing what he's telling you to do, you're being disobedient. So get busy doing what he's telling you to do. Get busy doing what he's telling you to do. 
Stop sitting on your potential. Stop sitting on your gifts. Stop sitting on your assignment. It's souls that need to be saved, literally. I say this all the time. It's souls that need to be saved. They're going to hell faster than I'm talking. Going straight to hell every day. Every day. And you doubting yourself. You doubting your abilities. You doubting that God is going to show up when he say he's going to show up. You doubting that, that God is God. You're afraid to do what he's telling you to do. You're afraid to get busy. Get busy, start doing what God is telling you to do, right? The more you give yourself to devotion and discipline and the things that God is calling you to do, the more you're going to be reminded of the enormous blessings and the eternal importance of what it is to be God's child. The more you grow in the... Uh, space of knowing your power, your authority, and knowing who you are in God, the more you stop doubting him, the more you're going to stop doubting yourself. And you can start, like I said, getting busy. Because now you're doing things, the, the more steps you take, right? In getting busy and doing what God is telling you to do, the more you're going to start believing in yourself. And the more the more you do what God is telling you to do, the more God is going to show up and he'll keep giving you things to do. The more you prove yourself faithful, he's going to come through every time. So guess what? Naturally, you're going to stop doubting yourself because you're growing in your confidence as you keep doing things and things working out. And you start to no longer doubt God because God is constantly showing up. He constantly lighting that footstep. Every step you take in, he constantly giving you the next step. You may not see the whole staircase, but you might not even see the step in front of you right now. But as long as you're willing to take it and you actually take it, you're going to get to the point. You'll start taking them more and more and more. Guess what? Guess what you're doing? You're no longer doubting yourself because you now you're taking those steps like, hmm, I took the first step and it worked out. So I can take another one. It'll work out because I made it work the first time. Well, God made a way. And then you ain't doubt him no more. Okay, well, he may, if he lit that first step up, I know if I take another step, he gonna light that one up too. I know if I take Another step after that, he going to keep lighting my path. He's going to be the lamp upon my feet because that's what his word says. If I just get busy with what he told me to do, if I just get busy with what he told me to do, it's going to strengthen my faith and help my unbelief. It'll help my doubt. I just got to get busy doing what he told me to do. Has doubt robbed you of your enthusiasm to do what God is calling you to do? Has doubt robbed you of the joy of doing what God has told you to do? Are you allowing your doubts to keep you in a place so much that you ain't doing what God's telling you to do? And you don't even have a joy to do it. Because you doubt yourself so much. You doubt God so much. <sighs> Number five um, of how you can start, stop doubting God and stop doubting yourself. Get into a space of encouraging other people. Encouraging others that are doubting God. Encourage them to not doubt him. I never knew this was true until I started doing it. And I'm not even talking about doubt, but 
if you ever, somebody told me a long time ago, if you are ever like, whatever it is that you're going through, like if you in a space where you coming out of a relationship, you trying to get through a heartbreak, whatever, that's just an example. Go help somebody else through one. You in a space where you struggling to pay bills or, or get money, go help somebody else that's struggling. It does wonders to your mind. Go and help somebody else. You in a space that you doubt in God, go help somebody else. Encourage them to believe in him. It does, I can't even speak on how much it transforms your mind. I can't even begin to speak on it. The more you start helping them, guess what? guess who's gonna start growing in their own belief you helping them believe so you naturally gonna start believing yourself you naturally gonna stop doubting God because you helping somebody else stop doubting go and help other people other people that's doubting God go and help them right? When I was coming out of a space of not believing in myself and full of doubts and just, you know, lacking confidence, um, this is how I actually started my business. God tells me, tell your story, you know, um, tell your story. That's how you're going to find yourself. You'll find out who you are. Hold on, yeah, sorry. You'll find out who you are by starting to tell your story, right? I was embarrassed. I didn't want to tell my story. I'm like, yeah, no, nobody wants to hear that. Like, that ain't it, God. Anyway, eventually, and I'm like, God, how can I help somebody else? Because when I first started coaching, this is what God led me to do is help others, women, as a matter of fact, come out of a space of the insecurities, put their, con believe in themselves. You stop being, um, stop lacking confidence, stop doubting yourself. And, and I'm like, well, God, I'm just coming out of that myself. I'm still dealing with it myself. How can I go help them? But he kept impressing it upon me, help them come out of that space. Start telling your story, start helping other people gain more confidence in themselves. Start helping other people Stop doubting themselves. Start, start helping other people overcome their own insecurities. It, it worked wonders. I legit, I did it. I started doing it and I legit started believing in myself more. My confidence started skyrocketing. I stopped doubting myself so much. I started really like, hmm, believe in God more. Stop doubting him because he kept making ways. Remember, I talked about that, right? And it, it just did, it, 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 it just took my business to a whole nother level. I started by helping other people get started. <laughs> Literally. I started helping other women come out of lack of confidence and not believing in themselves and just really like doing a lot of mindset work, all of that. And I'm literally... In this, I was in a space where I was coming out of it myself. I was so fresh. I, I wasn't even fully out. But I started helping other people. So you got to start helping other, other people who doubt God. They doubt God, you go help them believe. Go get in the Word. Learn a scripture or two. Right? If you don't read it every day, commit one, one day, commit 20 minutes to reading a word, right? Pick a scripture, commit it to your memory. Go share it with somebody else who doubt in God. In whatever area, it could be money, it could be relationships, it could be whatever. Whatever area they're doubting God in and not believing that he's going to come through in that area, find scriptures that match up with it and then go encourage them. Hey, you know, I was reading the Bible um, earlier 
I, I mean, I only read one verse, and I mean, but you know, I, I the, the verse stuck out to me. And I know, you know, you're doubting God because he hadn't come through on, on um, helping you with your uh, bills that need to be paid. You know, you need money and you don't know when the money coming. You don't know what, what it, where it's coming from. You know, and I was just reading. Uh, I can't tell you like, a, 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 I can tell you a Bible verse, but I can't tell you where it is in the Bible. But I was just reading, you know, and God said that, you know, um, he going he, he, he gonna to take you into a land of, where you lack nothing. I think you should trust that. He 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 said you you ain't gonna lack nothing. All you but but you gotta believe that though. That he he said you know you gonna live in the land of plenty. I think you should trust that because, you know, God doesn't lie. So just you know, and I, I know it may not be what you want to hear right now. But maybe it'll encourage you to hold on just a little bit longer. And at the same time, I'm encouraging myself to hold on just a little bit longer. Because I'm helping you not doubt. And I'm helping myself not doubt. And guess what? Not only am I growing in my faith in God and my help in my unbelief, I'm growing in reading the word. Commit one scripture. If it's one scripture a day, go read it. Find whatever your situation is. Commit it to your memory and then go help somebody else. Encourage them to come out of what it is that they're going through. I promise you, it will help you. Who do you know that needs some encouragement to stop doubting themselves and to stop doubting God? You can you can one hundred percent speak to their struggle, right? God is going to encourage you. He'll give you the words. He'll give you what you need to say. Because he's always near and he's always with you. So who do you know that needs encouragement that you too need? Find somebody and go encourage them. Okay? And lastly, the last way, number six, of how you can stop doubting yourself and stop doubting God is to let your doubt drive you closer to God. So this is kind of like um, number, which one did I? Kind of number three, where I said, um, confess your struggle to believe, which is draws you closer to God. All of these really draw you closer to God, but let your doubts drive you closer to God. Don't run away from God in your moment of doubt. Draw closer to him. The Bible says, um, Draw near to me and I will draw near to you and the devil will flee. The closer you get to God, the closer God is going to draw to you, right? And the devil will flee. Meaning the devil go, he, he, he starts to realize, okay, well, I can't come at her no more with them same lies. Because remember, that was number one. That was number one. Start, uh, I got to find it. Fight the devil's lies. You start fighting his lies. You start getting closer to God. You start getting to um, getting in his word and start believing what God said in his word. Guess what? The devil like, okay, well, I can't come at the, I can't come at her with them same lies no more. I can't I can't make her doubt herself no more because she 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 growing in God. She she drawing closer to God. She believed in what God said, and the God's word is true. So I, I can't, I can't keep telling her she ain't worthy. I can't keep telling her that she can't do it. I can't keep making her believe that she ain't got what it takes, because now she believes in what God told her and what God spoke over her life, and and she know like 
She's starting to believe her power. She's starting to see her authority and who she is in God. And I, I can't give her my lies no more. I can't give her my lies no more. She's drawing closer to God. So I got to come up with another tactic to try to get in her mind. Right? So let your doubt drive you closer to God. Don't run from him when you're starting to doubt. God says, come to me. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me with the burdens on your heart. Come to me with the problems that you feel are weighing you down. Come to me. Give it to me. He said, I will give you rest. I'm going to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. God says in the Bible, my yoke, my burden is, give me, hold on, let me look it up. My burden is easy. My yoke is light. Yeah. So the burden is easy. Yeah, I'm reading the same verse. I didn't even know that, right? <laughs> anyway, he says, you heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I am gentle and lowly in heart. I got you, in other words. I'm going to be gentle with you. I got you. You will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Verses 28 through 30. Come to me. I got you. I'm going to give you a soul rest. You doubting me, but I promise you, just, just come to me. I'm going to give your soul rest. Let me take that burden off of you because my burden is light. I'm going to take the burden. This ain't this lightweight for me. I'm going to take your doubts and give you reasons to believe. Because that's, that's lightweight work for me. It's lightweight. That's easy. I'm going to let your soul rest. I'm going to give your soul rest. Stop worrying. Stop doubting. Stop stressing. I got you. <laughs> God is so good. So good. So, when you're in a space of doubting, you got to remember that you're not fighting the battle by yourself. You're not fighting this battle by yourself. You're not doing it alone. If, if you weren't here from the beginning, I started off saying how we tend to doubt because we think about our abilities our capabilities, what we can do in our power, in our might, in our strength. And we know, because this, this is all we know, is the comfort zone, the box that we've been in. So we start thinking in that box, because that's all we've seen. So as a result, we start to doubt ourselves. And you start to doubt God. And like I said, you got to remember that you are not alone in this fight. God is with you. He's not calling you to do something that he doesn't believe that you can do. He's never going to call you to, to, to do an assignment that he knows you can't do. If he told you to do it, that means he believes you can do it. He knows that you can, as a matter of fact. He knows that you can do it. 
and 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 you got to know that you can do it you can't do it by yourself though you got to know that with God by you God with you cuz he with you every step you take God has already paved the way the angel has already gone before you the 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 the, 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 the um, God is the lamp upon your feet the light upon your path He's he with you every step of the way. Give it to me. I will give you rest. I'm with you. So run to God when you are in a space of doubt. Get closer to God. Get closer to God, right? And I'm going to leave y'all with this. In verse, hold on. Let me find it. One second. Um, in faith. Oh, yeah. I said it earlier. Somebody, yeah, thank you. Yeah, somebody actually said this. I wasn't even looking up the um, scripture. But James chapter 1 verse 6. Ask in faith without doubting. Let me pull, let me get my Bible. Um, James chapter one, verse six. James is here. Verse six, it says, when you ask, but when you ask, I'm going to start at five. If any of you lack wisdom, ask God who gives generous, generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. Number six. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Number seven. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Verse 8, such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. That's it. If you don't remember nothing else I said, take that verse and put it on your heart. Isn't that what I say? Commit one verse. I just gave you one. I made it easy for you. You didn't even got to go pick up the Bible. I made it easy. One verse. James chapter 1. Verses, I read five through eight. But if, if you just pick up verse number six off of this whole lot, if you just pick up verse number six, when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. If you think about the waves in the sea, they have no structure. So is that how you want your belief to be? Is that how you want your prayers to be? Where you going and you doubting God and you kind of like tossed like the waves. They just keep going. Like it's just, you just going, no control. You just constantly doubting and unstable in all your ways. Is that what you want? Like, that's what you want to continue to do? God is constantly telling us, listen, when you pray, you got to pray in faith. You got to believe what you're praying for. You got to believe that God is who he says he is, and he is going to do what he says he's going to do. You want answers to your prayers? You got to start believing that God is who he says he is and he is going to do what he says he is going to do. You got to pray in faith, believing that God is able to work and move even in what seems to be impossible to us. Because remember, it's, my yoke is easy, my burden is light not impossible to God. Stop trying to do it on your own. Stop trying to do it on your own. 
that will keep you in a space of unbelief. The greatest enemy to answer prayer is unbelief. The greatest enemy. You want your prayers answered. Start believing that God can answer them. Stop doubting yourself. Stop doubting God. Pray without any doubts. And that's the verse I'm going to leave y'all on. James chapter 1 verse 6. If you ask, ask in faith without doubting. It's time for us to break these chains. It's time for us to come out of this mental bondage. It's time for us to stop believing the lies of the devil. You have everything you need right now, today, to do what God's telling you to do. You have absolutely everything you need. Stop doubting yourself. Stop doubting God. God ain't never left you. He never will. He, he is always with you. He is forever faithful. Stop believing what the devil tell you. If it ain't what God said, it ain't true. All right? So, I hope this message touched somebody tonight. And, you know, because I love y'all. I love y'all, right? I really do. So I hope this message touched somebody. Thank you, Alan Beauty. You're welcome, Lola Marie. Share the video out with somebody you, you feel may need it. I just want to save your soul. That's just all God want me to do. I'm, I'm sick of people saying that you know, the devil is seemingly to allowing him to win. Who said I just joined? Quality for real. It'll be saved on my page. Um, I, I did state at the beginning of the live, though, that I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to start saving my videos on my YouTube channel. Um... So I'll keep them up for maybe a day or so on my on my Instagram, and then I'm going to put them on my YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe, turn your post notifications on so you'll know when I do a video. I'll actually start going live on YouTube too. Um, but so it's Samantha J. West on YouTube. We gotta do better, y'all. I'm here every week. Wednesday, 6.30 Central Standard Time. And I just want to save your soul. <laughs> that, that's it. Like, I don't ask for much. I don't ask for much. I just want to save your soul. So the message blessed you. I appreciate it. If you want to sow into my ministry, I'm very grateful. If you don't, that's fine. I'm grateful either way. Grateful that I was able to touch your soul. But definitely, if you want to, sow into the feel free to. Everything that you sow goes right back to God. I don't do anything with it. I use it to build the ministry. Because it's not easy at all. <laughs> it's not easy and it's not free. So, I pinned in the comments. Um, I mean, yeah, at the bottom, my Cash App and my Zelle. So, if you want to sow into my ministry, it is definitely greatly appreciated. Anything you want to sell. I, like I said, I automatically give it right back to God. Island Beauty asked if um, any emails tonight. Um, girl, um, this is going to be the email. <laughs> like, listen. And so she's asking, because like I mentioned earlier in the live, uh, I... I issued a challenge last week to people, just whoever wanted to do it, a challenge of um, 
to stop making excuses and stop complaining. And um, I was like, we're going to do a 30 day challenge. And I had some people sign up. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't, I, I wasn't even putting it out there for people to sign up. I, I was just saying like, let's do it. Right. And I'm like, we're going to hold each other accountable. And so, um, I've been sending out emails, uh, true enough. I don't send them every day. I'm trying, but it's, it's a lot. Like I do a lot. And, um, anyway, I'm not going to even make an excuse. I do a lot. And you know, sometimes I'm just tired, but, um, so she was asking if I was sending an email tonight. If I don't send one tonight, I'll send it in the morning and, um, make sure you know y'all get something some goodness um yeah but that's what that's about so thank you for keeping me keeping me accountable baby girl i appreciate that i really do i really do um lola marie i will try to join on wednesdays now that i know of course i'm here wednesday every wednesday it's wednesday wisdom with samantha J. uh 6 30 central standard time Quality for real. How are we doing with the no complaining? I haven't gotten many emails from you, ma'am. I've been getting emails from a lot of other people. So I know, you know, how it's working. But y'all let me know because I really want to know, like, how is, how is God showing up? How is God showing up in your life? How are you feeling? You know, how is it working for you? Because I know, like, just from some of the emails I'm receiving back. And I don't respond, so y'all just charge it to my head, not my heart. Because I get them, I read them all, I just don't respond to them. Um, but I really do want to know, like, how are things changing for you? How's your mindset changing? How are things shifting in your life? How have you, like, really started hearing from God more? Are you hearing from Him clearly? You know, like, I really want to know, like, how are things really going for you on the challenge, right? Um, quality for real. You didn't get the emails? I've been sending them out. Hmm, I'm sorry. Send me your email. I don't know why you didn't get them. I put everybody on an email, um, on my email list. Thank you, T.S. Bless. But yeah, send me your email and I'll make sure. If I, Like I said, if I don't send one out tonight, I'll send it out tomorrow. Um, and Island Beauty, you can let me know how, the day, how your day went. You can, you can send me an email anytime. If I don't send you one, that's fine. But, you know, definitely feel free to send me one. I did reach out. I've been reaching out. All right, quality for real. Um, send me a send me a DM, um, letting me know your email. I thought I, I I had everybody's, but if I missed yours, I apologize. It was totally not intentional. But um, yeah, so that's that, guys. I am about to. Go pray and call it a night. I'm going to go talk to my kids for a minute. But yeah, I hope the message touched you guys. Excuse me. I hope that you were um, fed. Your soul is fed. And you ready to stop doubting God. Stop doubting yourself. So you can start getting answers to your prayers. But anyway, every Wednesday... 6.30 Central Standard Time. I am going to go live on TikTok next week. So it's Instagram and TikTok. I am going to have multiple platforms. We just got to work it all out. So y'all literally seeing me build up, right? These are things that you got to deal with as you build in. Like people think that it's because social media tricks you into thinking like, oh, it, you only see people in this level. You know, they don't want to show all the, 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 the back end stuff that you got to go through to actually build, right? And to get where get there, so y'all seeing me build it up, and these are things that I do. Like you, you don't, you may not have the technology, you may not have the equipment, you may not have everything you need, but you still keep doing it. You still keep going. And that's like that's starting. That's what you do when you start. You start from the ground up, and you make it work. So y'all gonna see me build it out straight up. So. um 
because I'm going to, like, I'm building my ministry, legit, and that's just, you know, so y'all going to definitely see it, so we're going to go live on Instagram and TikTok next week, I'm going to make it work, all right, we're going to get this technology together, and we're going to all make it work, so, um, <laughs> I love that island beauty. I'm finna be all in his face too, girl, because baby, we need to talk. <laughs> but y'all listen, share out the video if you were touched by it. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for staying. Thank you for just rocking with me. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. I love you more than you know. I am just grateful for you. I love pouring into you. I just love God using me in the way that he is. So if it touched you, so into my ministry, help me out. If not, that's fine too. If you don't have anything to give, that's fine. I understand. But just know that you are appreciated. Okay? Um, I'm new with this, but I slipped for a little bit and I wasn't praying and I was very emotional, a lot of anxiety. What does that mean? Um, it means that you're being stretched. It's your Mara, you're being stretched. Like if you stretch it, if God is, when God is stretching you, like he's pulling you away from things that you used to. He's pulling you away from your comfort zone, basically. He's pulling you out of things that you know as your normal. And so the stretch, you know, it comes with, you start, you may feel anxiety. You may feel anxious because you you're going into unknown territory you you're probably like the first one in your family or you know amongst your friends you're doing things differently or trying to anyway and you feel anxiety because or you feel you know frustrated or uh, fearful or whatever you start doubting like i talked about tonight because you're being stretched into an area where you've never been before just go with the stretch baby girl just go with the stretch it's, it, it's not easy. It's not, I, mean, I will not tell you a lot that it is. It's not easy at all. But, you know, it's just God taking you, stretching you out of your comfort. He wants you to be uncomfortable. You're going to be uncomfortable when you grow and stretch in stretching God. So he's going to stretch in your faith, your patience, your obedience, your endurance, your perseverance, your honey, everything, everything, your faith, everything. So just go with the stretch. Don't resist it. Go with it. All right? So, tonight was good. I really, really enjoyed that. So, I'll see y'all next week, though. Thank you for your support. I love you. Bye.